Hi, everybody. So I've been reading and studying an awesome book by Joe Navarro called Dangerous Personalities. Um, if you haven't heard of it, you should definitely check it out. The author's name is Joe Navarro, and the book's name is Dangerous Personalities. It's really great. What it does is it takes all of the uh, personality disorders that end up being dangerous to others uh, and puts them into four categories. So one thing that it does not do, it is not a clinical guide for uh, you know professionals and statisticians to use, etc. It's just it's for the lay person and completely removed from the book. And this is what makes it so great. Um, and I love this because it really helps insulate against making the armchair diagnoses that a lot of us try to make um, and ultimately getting it wrong. Uh, and so by doing that, it uses layperson terms. So it never goes into any of the details like, you know, are they borderline? Are they bipolar? Are they, uh, you know, histrionic? Are they borderline? Are they a narcissist? Are they an antisocial? Are they, you know, paranoid schizophrenic? It, they don't, he doesn't use any of those terms. Instead, he lumps them all into sort of four overarching categories. And this is what makes it great. So the four dangerous types of people are the people who are emotionally unstable, the people who are predators, the people who are narcissistic, and the people who are paranoid. And so he lumps all four of these together. And one of the things that I've noticed in particular with most all of these, and especially with the support groups that, that I'm in uh, and where I talk to people, is there is sort of a trap laying mentality. And there's two types of trap layers. There's the kind that set their own trap and catch you. And then there's the type that notice danger and they notice traps and they say nothing. And then they let you fall into it and then they capitalize on it. Uh, and, those are the, and those are the types of people where uh, you'll, you'll, you'll find yourself, like you say, you're having a rough time or a hard time and you're... you're you're down on, on your luck and then somebody comes and they, they pick you up and they rescue you and they save you and you're forever grateful for this person and you love this person and then shit goes way downhill, right? So that's the other type of trap layer. And now this isn't a, this isn't something that he really um, directly talks about in the book, but it's just from my observation. Um, and I want to put this uh, out there. Just because more and more I've, I've been reading stories about how people got to the point to where they are now and how can a person be like this, etc. One of the things you need to understand, and I've said this before in other videos, but never really just in a dedicated video, they are trap setters um, and trap noticers. A very good example is like a spider. Spiders, they do several things. Number one, they spin a web, AKA the trap, okay? And then they wait and they wait and they wait until you or, or whatever target, either they, they, they specifically target somebody or they just wait for somebody to come into their, um, you know, to become ensnared in, in, the, in the web and then become weak. One of the things that is a hallmark of a spider is when something gets caught in the web, Depending on what it is, and spiders can tell through the, uh, through the <clears throat> vibrations. If it's something small and tiny, they go and they jump on it, they pounce right away. But most of the time, if it's something with significant weight and strength and power, the spider does nothing. Uh, it just waits patiently. And it sits there and it watches this strong, this bigger, stronger, superior uh, creature exhaust itself uh, trying to free itself from the situation um, and this is very typical of, uh, of a dangerous personality they'll sit there uh, the ultimate goal is to get something right that's the supply so uh, what they do is, is they see that you're in peril they see that you're in trouble but you, do, you seem to be doing okay so far. It looks like you got a lot of fight in you, but I'm gonna keep an eye on you and just wait. And they're gonna wait, they're gonna, and they'll probably do little things here and there to sort of add to the exhaustion. Maybe yes, maybe no. 
But the point of it is, they've either set the trap or they've noticed the trap. They see something promising fall into it, and then they wait. They do nothing until, uh, until their prey is significantly exhausted. And then spiders do two things, and this is really, really important because this translates to real life here. So spiders will do two things to hold on to what's theirs, you, right? Um, or their prey, whatever the supply is. They do two things, spiders do. Number one, they inject their prey with venom to poison them. And number two, they come and they wrap them ever tighter with, with more silk to further ensnare them. So just in case, uh, you know, uh, their prey gets, you know, a surge of energy, you know, and, and, um, and strength of Hulk-like proportions, you know, they can't really break free. And so what you see is um, you know, these spiders, they, they'll come up and, you know, whether it's a fly or a wasp or, or whatever it is in, in the web, they come and they tighten it up. They, they tighten the physical bonds and then they poison it to keep it weak. And what I, I see this pattern uh, repeated uh, so much where everything starts off great, everything's wonderful, and then you just become more and more exhausted. So in the case of where it's a, if it's a female abuser abusing a man, one of the things that is uh, uh, a hallmark is she, uh, uh, it, this is a, a somewhat common pattern, it's a manipulation tactic known as a powerful dependent. In other words, you're such a good provider. You're such a great provider. You know, um, you know, we're so blessed. Our family's so blessed. Um, and then what they do is they they make you aware of how dependent they are on you and how appreciative they are of you, and that supercharges you to go out and do a good job. And then. What they do is they grow the needs of the family. They grow the needs, they grow the needs. So the need for more money comes in and more money and more money. So the man starts working harder, starts working harder, starts working longer, and he, beca he begins to become exhausted and he starts to lose energy. And then when he's tired and exhausted and losing his energy, that's when the spider comes and makes its move. Um, and um, I, I can use that example because I'm, I'm a guy and I have talked to guys that do this. Um, nothing off the top of my head really comes to mind for a um, man exhausting a woman, but I imagine it has something to do with just nitpicking every little thing. Uh, nothing's ever good enough, etc. Um, I'm, sure, I'm, I'm sure more than one of you can, can cite a thousand examples, right? Um, and, and, and that's what they do, they exhaust you. They wait for you to get exhausted. And then when you're exhausted, they do one or two things. They'll either inject you with something toxic or they tighten the constraints, right? And you, we see, like, overwhelmingly, I see this with finances. Um, you know, when you're, you come home, you're tired and exhausted. They're like, honey, I, I know you're tired, but we need to talk about the car. I know you're exhausted, but we really need to talk about what we're gonna do for spring break. You know, um, that, that's exactly what they do. Um, and you're too tired to fight back. And what this is, this is the, this is the equivalent of the uh, wrapping with more silk. Because what this does is this drains the bank account, this, uh, or it equates to another monthly payment so more money is going out the door that benefits uh, this manipulator. Uh, there's less free money left over. So they're getting more. You're locked in monthly. So now that you've got the monthly payments, uh, you can't really go back on it now. Um, and so the, you are now wrapped up tighter because the less money you have, the less freedom you have. And so now you're not exactly free to go breaking out and, and you know, dumping them and going and finding somebody new. This is also one way how people with fear of abandonment um, sort of take matters into their own hands to sort of hedge against being abandoned, right? Well, if, if I make it so that you can't leave me financially, then you won't leave me. You know, so this is a, a, something that you see with uh, those types of people is the, the financial constraints, right? 
And then the second you start fighting back, so if you're exhausted and you say, no, let's not talk about this right now, then they, they switch over to the toxicity. And they say, well, when is a good time? Is there ever a good time to talk to you about important things? Or do you just want me to solve all the problems? You know, they, like they, they put it all back on you. So then they, they come back with toxicity. If they can't lock you in uh, financially or with whatever means it is for their security, then they, uh, they attack you with toxicity um, and drag you down that way. And so there's just this slow erosion. And like, like we've said before, narcissists and, and some of these other manipulators, they're the more proficient ones, the ones who are cheating uh, and uh, seeing other people, they just got more than one bug in the web. And they go around all the different bugs. They call it spinning plates. And um, they go and they take from one, then they take from another, then they take from another, and they take from another. Um, and at the end of the day, you say, well, how can somebody be so terrible? How can somebody do this to other people? How can people do this? And the answer is, it's just how they are. Just a spider is a spider. You say, if you look at it, you're like, well, a spider's just a bug. It's just a bug. But why does it, it doesn't have to act like that. It can choose not to. Why does a spider do that way? Well, because it's a specific type of bug. That's what spiders do. You know, um, does every spider do it? Yeah, pretty much. Um, and vice versa, you say, I have this bug, and what it does is it, is it makes this big sticky, like, net or web or something. And it sits in, in this in this big sticky web it creates and then waits for something to come get stuck. And then what it does is it gradually wears them down. You know, and I've never seen a bug like this before. What kind of bug is this? And anyone who's familiar would say, oh, it's a spider. Oh. Well, why do they do that? Because that's how spiders are. Uh, and the same thing is true of people. Okay, how can people be so terrible? How can people... Uh, act like this? How can people behave this way? Um, because we want to think that they have in them the capacity to be like us. And the thing is, uh, that's just not how it is with people. Everybody's different. Everybody's different. Nobody's like you, right? And that's just the nature of some people. It's just their nature. If you're a funny guy, laughing, cutting up, always telling jokes, the, the life of the, the room, nobody ever comes up to you and says, but why do you have to be so funny? And, why, what is it with you? Like, why do you value humor so much? Why is it you? Why do you always have to make people laugh? Can't you just be quiet? You know, why are you funny, right? Yeah, go up to a comedian and say, "Why are you funny? Why are you funny? Why can't you just be boring?" Like, Fuck you, because I'm funny, you know. So it, it, same thing is, is true of these dangerous people. So why are you? Why are you so dangerous to others? It's just how they are. Um, and the thing is, um, moving forward, you know, educate yourself because that's the one thing you're responsible for. And especially if once you start becoming familiar with these behavior patterns, you choose to not continue your education on it and you fall back in with, with another one. Uh, that second time, that one's more on you than it is on them because they didn't get the opportunity to change and, and you did and you squandered your opportunity to change. Um, if you get fooled once, shame on you, you know, fooled once, shame on me, fuck, whatever it is, fooled once, whatever, whatever, I'm an idiot. So, I'm almost out of time. I really hope this helps. Uh, please like, comment, or share, uh, and I'll see you on the next video.